So moving on uh, to our next session, I'd like to invite uh, Shantanu Gaur, NASCOM uh, COE, for the launch of the Healthcare Innovation uh, Challenge. Shantanu, over to you, please. Am I audible? So I would need some help with changing the presentation screen, please. Perfect. So good morning, everyone. I'm going to take you through one of our flagship programs, which is called the Healthcare Innovation Challenge. And uh, this is a very unique program because under this program we have been working with various healthcare enterprises to help them in navigating their journey of AI adoption. So for this program what we do is we follow a, pro a framework of 3D which stands for define, discover and deploy. So under the define stage what we do is that for the healthcare enterprises that come on board this program we work with them to understand their problem areas, their challenge areas and we convert that to a use case which we use that and this forms the basis of the next two uh, stages that we have in, in which under the discover stage we use the use case details that are captured under the defined stage to curate the best solution providers from across the nation. Finally in the deploy stage we work hand in hand with the healthcare enterprises that come on board for this program for uh, facilitating the implementation of the curated solutions. So, so far we have done around five editions of this so far and these are the use case partners, these are the healthcare enterprises that we have worked with. Now this comprises of uh, you know a diverse set of stakeholders in terms of uh, the uh, healthcare providers, multi-speciality and super-speciality hospitals public and private insurance companies, medtech enterprises and even the tech enterprises that want to explore these solutions, adopt these solutions for their end clients. Now one of the things which I mentioned is that we are helping these enterprises in their adoption journey. The overall objective of this is to help these enterprises in enhancing their clinical or operational workflows. So whichever stakeholders that we saw earlier, we have worked on these use cases along with them to wherein these healthcare enterprises have been able to successfully deploy various kinds of AI, IoT and other digital technology based solutions to help them create an impact in their organizations. And today what we have is what marks the launch of sixth edition of this program in which we have a set of stakeholders who have come on board with their use cases and uh, we have some senior stakeholders who are going to represent these healthcare providers and they will talk about their nominated use cases also their expectations from these programs in terms of the uh, the assistance that we are going to provide them in curating the best solution providers not only that helping them in the end-to-end -end execution and the implementations of those solutions at an on-ground level. So for that, I would like to call upon uh, first Dr. Sheila John. She is Head of Teleophthalmology from Sankar Netralaya. Let's have a big round of applause for Dr. Sheila, please. Dr. Akshat Malik, Senior Consultant, Max Institute of Cancer Care. So Dr. Akshat is travelling all the way from Delhi. Let's have a big round of applause for him as well. <laughs> Dr. Manzoor Sheikh, Deputy Head and Lead Health Technology Assessments, Dr. Mehta's Multi-Speciality Hospital. Let's have a bigger round of applause for all these people. And finally, Mr. Sudeep Day, the Chief Information Officer, SCG. So SCG has been, yeah, big round of applause please. 
So HCG has been one of our close partners. We have worked with them earlier as well on a couple of use cases. And this time around, we had the privilege of having them again for a few of the use cases, and they will be talking about them. But first up, I would like to call upon, I would like to invite Dr. Akshat Malik to introduce himself and also talk briefly about the nominated use cases. Dr. Akshat Malik. Well, morning everyone, it's exciting to be here and uh, to come to a packed hall, it's very nice. Thank you Shantanu for doing this and NASCOM of course. Uh, my name is Akshat Malik, I am a hedonic cancer surgeon based in Delhi. I practice at Max and probably many of you would be aware we are one of the biggest chains of corporate hospital and uh, in oncology we have the biggest presence in Delhi NCR region which we are expanding outside also. Now as a department, uh, as an oncology department what we thought we would have an internal discussion and you know come up with various things which we could uh, look for solutions for and uh, eventually what happened was that we shortlisted few things and uh, two of them I think Shantanu has shortlisted and uh, which we would be having out here. Will, will that be displayed on screen or? Okay, so these are actually related to predictive analytics and uh, the first one was regarding thyroid nodules. It's very common for patients to have thyroid nodules. Uh, every third or fourth person may be having a thyroid nodule. It may not be clinically seen often, but then if we do ultrasound for people, then quite a majority of the us present out here would have thyroid nodules. Now what happens is we only intend to treat these if patient is symptomatic for it or if they are cancerous. Now, how do we come to know that the nodule is cancerous? Currently, what we do is, this is based on clinical assessment, ultrasound features, and what we are seeing on FNC. FNC is where we are sticking a needle inside. So, we do have some staging systems which exist for uh, ultrasound features and also, also for the FNC. But there is a definitive need which is uh, required to predict chance of cancer in these uh, nodules. Uh, b b because what happens is the majority of people we end up operating, they would still be having benign nodules. They could have op avoided that surgery. There is an upcoming wave of molecular markers also in this, uh, for which there are several studies which exist. But that is very costly and again we remain at crossroads and we still don't know what to do for these patients. So if we can come with the solution which would be using ultrasound images uh, and FNC images and based upon that if uh, we can have a better prediction of risk of malignancy in these nodules that would be very nice. The second thing was regarding prediction of chemotherapy drug toxicities. Uh, you would be aware that chemotherapy are the drugs which we use to treat cancers, uh, not only chemotherapy even immunotherapy these days. and. Uh, as they are acting against cancer cells, they also act against body's normal cells and they cause a lot of toxicity and harm. It may be very severe, say we can talk about a heart attack or a cardiac event, but it may be simple thing as nausea vomiting which may be very severe. Uh, we call it grade 3, grade 4 toxicity. So if you are able to preempt these things, for certain of these points we do have, uh, li like we look at some genetic mutations for 5FU. Uh, that's a drug which we give, 5 fluoro -uracil. If you're able to, uh, similarly for other drugs also, we can find some genomic data or we can look even into the clinical data and over and above what we are able to guess and understand that, you know, this patient will be having such and such toxicity, probably I should reduce this dose or I should be more proactive while uh, trying to treat this patient uh, or to look out for symptoms. If this can be predicted through AI, that will be helpful. So, uh, these were the two things uh, which I bring to table out here. Thank you, Dr. Rakshad. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, now I would like to call upon Dr. Sheila John to talk about the nominated use cases. Let's have a big round of applause for her, please. Good morning, everyone. I would thank NASCOM for giving me this opportunity. 
I basically am head the tele ophthalmology department and knee learning departments. So what I have is I have a van with paramedical staff equipment which go into the villages and examine the patients, various villages, remote, and from there telemedicine is done. Depending, of course, in the rural villages, if there's connectivity. Very remote areas do not have connectivity. Other areas where we counsel the patient, we have a EMR in place, electronic medical records, but it's an offline EMR which is connected by a router and patient examination is done. We, it is a paperless we do because we go village to village to carry electronic medical records is easier than paper. This is what we have been doing. Now what problem we are facing is there are optometrists who are examining the patient and after that clinical examination is done and uh, advice is given. So basically we have counsellors also, but those counsellors are only uh, social workers. Their knowledge of the disease is very less. The optometrists who are examining the patient and prescribing glasses, their time is limited. Because in certain villages you get 150 patients, certain villages you get only 60. When the patient's strength is high, their concentration is on examining the patients. They are not able to sit and advise. And what happens is rural patients do not have any knowledge of the disease. So it takes a longer time to explain to them. So if they need a surgery like cataract surgery and they have to come to the base hospital, again it is very difficult because to explain to them what surgery is needed, how many days, what type of intraocular lens we will place, post-operatively what to be followed. And even social workers for the villages, what we get maybe one social worker or two social worker. Now it's even more difficult to get page, um, social workers to will continue to work in the villages. So what we have done, we were thinking of a chat GPT, which has large language based models, which can act as a virtual assistant, a chat box, which can help the patient, whatever the patient queries are given, will be able to answer them to a certain extent, then the medical counselor or optometrist will be able to take over. That's what we have thought of. And here it is, uh, I'm from Tamil Nadu, so I had to write something in English and then translate it into Tamil. So all the queries, if suppose a patient, cataract patient or diabetic retinopathy, what all they would think of, that is what we have tabulated into text. And what happens is when the patient are, takes up a query, that gets translated into text and the large language models go again, get speech recognition is there and then after that it goes to the database and then it's converted back into speech. This is what we are trying to do to help those rural patients so that they have more time with the counsellors. A virtual assistant, this is what we have thought of. The second one which we have thought of is, because in remote areas usually teleconsultations we do, the doctor ophthalmologist connects to the campsite, and, but in very very remote areas that is not feasible. What we have is somebody who takes the fundus images, again we have uh, taught him more but his knowledge is limited, it's not like a doctor. So to diagnose diabetic retinopathy and age-related macular de degeneration is very difficult in those areas. And for diabetes, more and more people are becoming diabetic. And what we have is diabetic retinopathy can cause irreversible loss of vision in an adult population. And because they have two eyes, one eye becomes very bad before they realize that they are becoming blind in one eye and it's painless. There is no symptom at all for diabetic retinopathy. So patient doesn't re realize till the very end this problem is there for him. So it's very important to do annual dilated examination for a diabetic patient. Similarly, age-related macular degeneration occurs in patients who are about 50 years of age and it's a major cause of blindness. And it's irreversible also once it goes on to the bed stage. So early detection is very, very important. Now with technology, smartphones have come up where you can take the fundus images, trans transport it to the base hospital and the doctor there can diagnose. But if suppose you are not able to do it, if you have an algorithm built into the phone, there itself the person who is taking the fundus images will be able to address it to the patient and tell them that he has to come to the hospital for the required examination. Thank you Dr. Sheila, we will need to Thank you. You know, keep it short. Thank you. Let's have a big round of applause for Dr. Sheila please. Now I would like to invite Dr. Manzoor Sheikh uh, from Dr. Mehta's Multi-Speciality Hospital to please talk about the use cases.
Hi, good morning. Audible? All right, so good morning everyone. I am Dr. Mansoor. I am primarily an emergency physician heading the emergency department at Mehta Hospital Chennai for the past six years now. And at Mehta's hospital, we have a dedicated health tech vertical for more than three years now. I have now been heading this for more than a year and a half. And we have evaluated about 32 different uh, proposals which have come to us. So what we do is, whoever approaches us, we try to, you know, we are a, a early adapters, early enablers of tech. So we try to see in what way we can collaborate with them and how we can help them. So we are currently working on three projects, two AI and one biomedical device, all innovations. So innovation has what has brought me here. Speaking of innovations, my jacket is one, saves me from the Chennai juice. So, but when I'm broad, I wear a full-blown, I suit up and I wear a full-blown blazer, right? So, innovation is what has brought us here. So, our use cases are two. One is for emergency medical services, right? So, anybody in an emergency, we call the emergency number. In India, 108, abroad, 911, whatever. And the dispatcher speaks and there is all this interaction happening. And to put it in better perspective, the most trained and skilled person we need to depute for this when they are receiving a distress call. Because before they dispatch the vehicle on site to provide support, they need to ensure that they are sending the right personnel, right equipment, right vehicle, many things have to be taken into consideration. Because once the vehicle is dispatched, it's in the external environment. You are no longer within our hospital campus. So once you go there and you realize I'm not adequately equipped to handle this emergency, we are in big soup. So what we're trying to solve there is, we want an AI-based solution where initially the AI, the customer will interact with the AI. You know, be able to give the data and AI probably generate an output saying, you know what, this this profile is here, this is the GPS location, this is the problem statement, these are the resources required. So that will save us a lot of time and if required for certain cases where validation is required, we may physically speak with them. This will help the entire nation to be honest. And then the other use case which we have uh, wanted to have a solution for is generation of discharge summaries, right? Nobody likes to wait. Nobody, especially in hospitals. You may want to wait at an ice cream parlor, movie theater, where not, but in a hospital, absolutely no. And once the doctor has said you're good to go home, it's a big no. You are itching to get home, right? So usually more often than not, what is between you and going home is this discharge summary, which is a very important document. It summarizes all the treatment which you have been given and has legal value also. So it's a very important document, right? So I'll just give a small uh, personal experience which happened in our hospital, right? So why we picked up this problem statement. So one fine day, we were doing this audit, how you know we all work on this stat time, stat times, how to make it better. Then we found out that suddenly there is a big increase in the TAT, suddenly the TAT reduces and suddenly it improves. So we are trying to understand what is causing this variability. Later we realized that one of our star clinicians who admits about 50 to 60 patients and does about 40 to 50 discharges in a day, he is Picasso when he writes. And there's only one ward secretary who actually understands exactly what he has written. So whenever this particular person is on leave, the TAT time propels. Whenever this person is available, the TAT time is very short, right? So we want to automate this and also automate this in such a way that we, have, we want this in a journey concept. Patient has come on day one, getting discharged on day seven. Right from day one to day seven, whatever has happened, in a click of a button, probably in a matter of minutes, if a solution can be provided, that it will be able to pull up all the relevant data and provide us with an accurate discharge summary. That will help us a lot and it will help all the other our customers also will be extremely happy with the reduced start time. So these are our two use cases. And before I end, Sanjeev ji, I have a call with Devika ji, 100% AI doctor. So there is a Hindi phrase, Main kya karun job chhod do. <laughs> So just on the funny side. So thank you, thank Shantanu. You. Thank, thank you, you Naskam. Thank you, Dr. Manchur. Now I would like a big round of applause, please.
Yeah, now I would like to call upon Sudeep Day, CIO SCG, to talk about their nominated use cases. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, almost similar. The first, both the use cases are uh, related to operationals enablement. Uh, we wanted to create a patient experience center, and that is where uh, we are. I would like to introduce briefly my organization, SCG. Uh, we are a cancer spe specialist, but the unique part is we have a hub and spoke model and uh, we are present in tier 2 and tier 3 areas where um, you know vernacular languages are more prevalent and uh, no matter what kind of technology we have deployed till now, uh, last two and a half years have been very very uh, transformative for SCG. Uh, we have been applauded much of it both clinically and business transformation wise, but still we have not been able to achieve one KPI which is giving the patient once he or she is uh, coming to the hospital or reaching out to the for the care, they have not got a good experience because we were focused on two languages, we were not focused on native languages. So we wanted to create something, we have tried our bit but not succeeded yet. I'm okay. Uh, so there, it says it all, we will engage with you and uh, we are open, good platform has been provided Shantanu. The second one is an interesting one and uh, it is more to do with finances. Uh, we have a lot of disallowances and for people if you are not aware, disallowances are cuts which happen from the uh, latter part and the payer takes out that money saying that these are things which were not allowed or not consulted you should have asked us for or something like that and they are per perennially cut so from our revenues which is around 2000 crore five to seven persons get deducted after that it is around 2000 crores we want to address that we want all these reasons of disallowances are in various platforms in variety of forms but if you are able to target around 80% of it, much of it is taken care of. These are maybe around 20 odd pairs who do most of our businesses. So we wanted a solution which can capture all that information, bring it down and in real time cater to when the patient care is actually happening for that particular segment of pair, we are able to take care of it before we are billing it. It is not about automation of the process, this we will be targeting, that is one of the simplest way and harmonizing brings its benefits, we are, there is no denial of that. My uh, request is that if you are able to analyze those bills and we have historical data in this use case also and the previous one also we discussed, we are looking for a solution in that. Thank you very much. Thank you Sudeep. Uh, thank you so much everyone for that fabulous uh, session. Uh, May I invite uh, Mr. Abhinav Kashyap, CIO Baxter International Incorporation, to please uh, felicitate our speakers. Please join us, uh, give them a warm round of applause for that. Yes, we can do this louder. Please keep that going for our speakers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone.